What is up everybody, this is Ronnie from Canva and welcome to another tutorial special CCC edition. Okay, so today I have a show for you with a special guest. She is one of our CCCs from Israel. Her name is Hadas and she is very good at using Canva as a force for good, as a catalyst for creating social projects, mobilizing her community because yes, she has a community and she's going to be teaching us five tips on how to grow a successful Facebook group or Facebook community at the end of this tutorial. And before that, we are going to dive and explore the different ways that she uses Canva to be a force for good. So, Hadas, are you here? Hello, Ronnie and everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. I am super excited to be here and I just can't wait for this to begin. Well, I'm so glad you're doing well, Hadas. Can you please tell us what we are going to learn with you today? What I would love to talk about is how to use Canva to be a force for good. This is actually Canva's motto, being a force for good. And I can really relate to it because this is something I lived by for many, many years. And I think, I truly think that you can use Canva to be a force for good in so many ways. My belief is that everyone should know how to use Canva since it's a very essential tool and you should use it just as much as you use a calculator or a Google Maps. You should use Canva. And since it is so intuitive and so, in my case, Hebrew friendly, I think that using Canva as a technical tool is not enough. You should use it to make something bigger, to make a difference, to make a point, to help out a person, a society, the environment, whatever is dear to your heart. You can use Canva for so many causes and for so many agendas. I love what you're saying here, Hadas. Could you give us some examples of how you are using Canva to be a force for good? First of all, one of my first challenges in my community was actually named being forced for good and it was very simple i just asked people to design something that is close to their heart it can be a message it can be a grand cause it can be something very personal and they need to use 100 percent canva and the rules were that this cannot be business associated this cannot sell a product or cannot be something that promotes your business or your service this has to be very clean very clear um, and uh, I asked them to post this in my community and the best three designs were, they, they won some Canva credits, but this was not the important thing. The most important thing was that the designs they posted, it made people react in so many heartwarming ways. The comments were amazing. Things were just put on the table, you know, things you didn't know about things you never thought about, you know, it became the talk of the day. I'll give you an example. One of the ladies that posted a design, she learned Canva in one of my offline courses. And in this challenge, she posted this very simple design. It had a background, a photo, and a text box. And she just wrote a poem about something that was very close to her heart. It was about how what it feels like to be a parent to an autistic child. And it was a very simple design, but this specific design made such a buzz. It, the comments were amazing and people just hugged her over, you know, virtually hugged her uh, in the community. People that did not know her, did not know about her. And she even posted it outside on her personal Facebook and perhaps in other places. And the comments just kept coming and this topic was just the talk of the day and it touched my heart because you know the topic touched my heart but also the thought that thanks to the challenge she got the, the, the opportunity to shout it out to share it to to bring something from her and to make other people relate to her another example is um well, actually, it's a, a now day example. We have this month in Israel, two Memorial Days um, that are very, very significant to Israeli citizens. And um, due to the COVID-19 situation, these ceremonies that all of the citizens of Israel take part in, they are canceled and people will find themselves in their homes um, with 
no um, way to express their feeling or their need to be part of something that is bigger. And so I decided, okay, there is this problem and I have a solution because I have Canva. And I can use Canva to make this virtual ceremony that I can share with people. And what I did was I designed this template, a presentation template, where I placed uh, text boxes and photo frames and I designed it uh, according, to the, uh, according to the Memorial Day. And I posted this template in my community, you know, free of charge just to use it and put in your personal family photos, family stories, whatever, and share it, share it with your dear ones. And this is something that is so powerful that you can use Canva to make people feel better, to unite people. You know, this is just not making, just not, not just making the world a better place, but also making people feel better. You can touch feelings with Canva. Another example I have is um, I did this amazing collaboration with Israel's biggest travel company. And uh, what we did is using my community only, we did this challenge or a competition. We asked people to design coloring books, coloring pages for children. And since, since this is a traveling company, uh, the, the theme was vacation, places in the world, traveling, camping, hiking, whatever. And uh, they had to design this and the 20 best designs would, would be put to uh, this coloring book that will be published um, to, to the company's um, uh, customers. And this is amazing because this is a collaboration made only with my group and all the designs were 100% by Canva. And it was amazing because I did this tutorial and I gave them an example and I did one of the coloring pages and I was really excited to see what they're gonna come up with and it was just absolutely overwhelming. It was much more than just asking them to design a coloring page. There was a lot of thought behind and they wanted to be part of something that is doing good back to society. And the motto here was to hand out something to children that are at home and are looking all the time for new things that they can do. And so this coloring book was an amazing idea that the company had and we implemented it immediately with Canva and the results were amazing. I must say it was so difficult to pick only 20. There, there, there were really amazing designs there. Talking about kids, uh, Hadas, uh, you recently told me that you were developing a Canva course for children, am I right? Can you tell us more about this project? I have just finished my first Canva Kids course. This is something that I've been running in my head for a long, long time. But I must say that this is another good thing that happened out of COVID-19 situation. And uh, it just speeded up things because kids are at home and you know they're learning remotely and things are just getting repetitive and uh, they're looking for new things to learn. So this Canva Kid uh, course is something that I'm super excited about. It is entirely in Hebrew, uh, but I am working on an English version. Uh, and what it looks like, it's actually a 50 minute course, about 50, 55 minute course that is divided into small classes of between one minute and seven minutes because you can't go any much longer with kids. And it's very fun courses because it, in the background you have this fun light music and um, I talk very simple and I go through all the desktop menus and possibilities of Canva and I teach them the basic things and the fun things that kids love like uh, under more the Bitmoji and the Emoji and Giphy and the things that they use and then uh, I also teach them how to do presentations for their classroom for their teacher for their families and how easily they can share it just you know with copying the link and they don't need their disk on key and they don't need to send heavy files over the email and uh, I teach them how to do their homework on an A4 dimension paper because this is what we use here in Israel anyway and uh, how they can do a book report, how can they write a letter, do their homework. So things that are relevant to them. And uh, at the end, they get this diploma that they have successfully um, finished their course and they are now a kid certified 
Canva designer. And uh, it's a template actually. They have to click on the template. It's an A4 certificate. And then they can just put in their name and print it out or send it to their teacher or to their parents or whatever, their friends. And that's it, you know, that makes them proud and it's like a trophy at the end of this course. And uh, I think it's a very good product and it's just being launched and I hope it will, uh, I hope it will be a success. Hadas, I wish I could speak Hebrew so I could engage in your community and be a valuable member in there. But unfortunately, I don't. Uh, but what I've noticed from just following you from afar, from a distance, is that your community is really thriving. Could you run us through your five tips to creating engaged and successful Facebook communities? My five tips would be, number one, be there. You have to be there. You cannot pop in every three or four days and post something and disappear again. No, you have to work at it. This is a full-time job and you have to show yourself there. You have to be present. And this is very important because if you are not present, a lot of bad things can just get wrong. So you have to be there. Number two would be make your members, your community members active. Make them work, make them share, make them post. You know, they are there because they want to be there and they don't want to be passive. They don't want to sit around in some community and just hear you and see you. You know, they want to be heard. They want to share their things. They want to suggest things. They want your, um, they want to give out their opinions. They want to ask questions. So make them. And this is what I do when I do the competitions and the challenges. I make them think. I make them feel, I make them work. You know, this is not a punishment. They are there because they want to. So this is very important. Give them the platform, give them the opportunity. My number three tip, my number three tip would be give added value. This is very important to be a community if you are Canva related that gives out tips and tricks and inspiration and, you know, being this technical supporter. But this is not enough. You have to, in my, in my opinion, give added value and do more than just technical support. Uh, this, as I said, doing all the challenges and all the competitions, uh, this gives people a reason to stay and to look forward to your next post and to not turn off their notifications. On the contrary, turn them on because they don't wanna miss out on your next post. My number four tip would be Bring things inside to your group, things from the outside that work well with Canva. And it's super easy because Canva works with almost everything. You just have to be a little bit creative and think of ways. Uh, it's, it's, so, it's so fun and people in your community will appreciate it because this is also part of the added value that I was talking about. Don't be so centralized and secretive and keep everything in-house. Just open it up, do it wisely, but open up your community to others to see, to join, to come in. And my number five tip would be, be human. Do not forget that when you have a Facebook community, you have people in your community. This is not just the gold rush after the numbers to see how it grows by the thousands. Behind every profile is a human being and they have a profession and they have a situation and they have feelings and they want things and you have to see them. So be sensitive. And if someone asks for your opinion, no matter what your opinion is, do it with sensitivity. You can tell a person he's doing something wrong, but you can do it in a very uh, pleasant way. You want your members to feel that your community is a safe zone and that not only they are human, you are human as well. So this is super important. And this wraps up everything I say about being a force for good. This is all social. And so everything I do, I call it social operations because this is totally 100% full-time job. And uh, this is my mission, to make people use Canva in a much, much deeper way and not only to ace it in Canva, but to ace it with Canva. And 
go and get your goal, go and do your mission and ace it because you did it with Canva and you can. Time flies when you're having fun. I have so much more to say, perhaps next time. Thank you once again. And as we say here in Israel, we have this slang. Well, mostly kids have this slang, but we adults also, we put yush after every word, like hi yush and thank yush and I love yush. So I'm just going to say goodbye that way. Bye yush. Well, thank you very much, uh, Hadas. Uh, I loved your five tips and I'm sure our viewers will love them too. It will really inspire them to maybe start their own communities. And by the way, guys, here are a couple of ways you can get in touch with Hadas if you have a question for her, if you want to follow and become a member of her community, uh, which is in Hebrew. Um, so if that is for you, uh, please follow Hadas, reach out to her. She will be really happy to connect. And that's it for me. That is our show for today. Thank you so much, Hadas, for being with us, for taking the time to do this with me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for watching it until the end. And I will see you in the next video.